about some of the other areas uh, in the company that I haven't been familiar with in the past. It's been interesting, we've talked about supply chain a lot, a lot of companies have talked about supply chain. In terms of the uh, government and infrastructure group, our challenge is a bit in the reverse. We're uh, working on decommissioning nuclear power plants, and so I'm looking at not tracking material, how it gets from uh, construction to, uh, or from uh, fabrication to construction, I'm looking on the back end. What do we do when we have to track every piece of material that comes from a decommissioned nuclear power plant uh, as it goes through the supply chain to the disposal site or the storage site? So it's been an interesting journey learning about supply chain and blockchain, and I'm looking into those applications as well. From a downstream perspective, one of the challenges is technology partnerships. Amic Foster Wheeler, now Wood, is a leader in selective yield delayed cooking technology, and we have a lot of the process units installed at refineries across the world. I've worked with the process technology group and found there's a lot of challenges uh, when we are responsible for maintaining, monitoring, and uh, keeping our process units work running at top performance when they're sitting inside the, uh, say, Exxon or Shell or PBF. One of the biggest challenges our group faces is access to information. Access to information by our monitoring teams is critical for success during the initial startup and operation of the unit. All too often, our monitoring teams get handicapped because we only get CSV data files through an FTP server daily, weekly, or monthly. Then we have to manually load the information into our monitoring platform, and then in order to do an effective evaluation of how the technology is, is performing. Uh, we actually license our back-end performance monitoring platform to other technology vendors, and this is not unique to our, to our company. I believe blockchain resolves this issue by allowing everybody to have access to the information and have that information stored uh, locally, securely on the blockchain uh, between all the participants. This allows us not to rely just on CSV files, this allows us, the company or the unit, to put the information on the blockchain and then for our monitoring experts to pull the information off the blockchain for uh, ensuring the technology performs properly. That access to information impacts the licensor or purchaser as well because they need to have the challenge of only uh, allowing us access to the information that directly relates to the performance of the unit. There's also a limit, there can be a limited amount of trust uh, between the different participants. From our perspective as a technology vendor, how do we know the equipment is being maintained properly? Uh, we don't have the people field uh, uh, people uh, within the refinery. We don't have them the ability to check to make sure the maintenance is being done correctly. What I want to see uh, within the technology licensing group is the maintenance records being put from say Maximo onto the blockchain. That way we can go back and ensure that the technology is being maintained, the unit is being maintained properly. When there are problems, this leads to a long dispute resolution process because it's hard to track information down from the multiple systems. If that information, at least uh, some part of the information was on the blockchain, that would allow everybody to get together and start resolving issues much faster. An area I think where we could actually enhance, work together to enhance the entire, say, refinery, is you know, what happens. Our group maintains the uh, delayed coker. Other groups, may the refinery may license, say, the cat cracker. What do you want to do? How do you get the vendors to work together with the refineries in order to increase the throughput of the entire refinery because you need both all the technology, all the units working uh, in combination with each other.
In addition to just blockchain, I think the IoT and smart contracts can fundamentally change the economics of how technology partnerships are uh, engaged upon. One of the challenges with blockchain is that it's a fundamental technology. It's something that sits below the surface, and you have to, and it, but it provides you much the ability to have much better information. Currently, we all have the nice, pretty data monitoring uh, platforms, but we don't necessarily have insight into the quality of data going in. When you're, that data is assigned to you and you're responsible for it, and you know that everybody else is responsible and that information can be tracked back to them, that incentivizes from the beginning the best quality data to go on the blockchain. This means that the KPIs and the dashboards you're looking at contain much more, much better information. If we can connect the IoT devices and the processes to smart contracts, this will enable us to do much smaller frequent payments because the payment process has already been designed and the data you can already do a much better job ensuring the quality. That way you can do payments, for example, only when the unit is running. That way that incentivizes us as technology vendors to do a much better job monitoring and quickly identify problems, alert the refinery so the unit stays up operating. Right now, that type of contract would be impossible to create. You can also further take that and do even more advanced contract terms to what happens if you get, as a technology vendor, I get paid more when the refinery is making more money. Then are everybody's incentives within the refinery are aligned uh, for success. Then you have automatic reporting to third parties. Uh, this reporting, uh, there's, this, uh, there's a variety of reporting that needs to go to government agencies or even internal groups with the smart contract. The smart contract gives you the ability to, when that information is put on the chain, only the, say, summary information that needs to be reported can be sent to the external party. Even if you don't have a direct connection to the external party, you can enable uh, at least a report that makes the reporting process much simpler from a, uh, uh, a compliance status. I work a lot with environmental groups within refineries in terms of monitoring uh, environmental performance, and one of the challenges they face is getting all the process information and adjusting it uh, and calculating it and reporting it to, say, the EPA. Now, since it's always easier to talk about other scenarios than things inside the company that I may be working on, I've chosen this as an example uh, of a possible how would a scenario work with uh, a licensed technology that's embedded within another third-party system. Fuel cells uh, have been used, and our Exxon and Fuel Cell have partnered to actually create a carbonate-based fuel cell that actually is able to scrub carbon dioxide from natural gas power plants and for sequestering while generating some electricity in the process. Right now, carbon capture is expensive, and that concentration process is difficult because it takes power away from the power company. This is a unique partnership, and I find it very interesting that Exxon is developing technology for deployment within power companies. So let's talk about, from a technology licensing perspective, what would this type of architecture look like? Uh, their partnership they publicize is with Alabama Power. So in this example, you have the power plant, you have the embedded fuel cell inside that power plant. That those devices speak industrial control system protocols, Modbus, OPC, PART, all those, if that information is already collected and but then has to be delivered to an edge device which converts that information from your OPC or Modbus uh, protocols to say MQTT and publishes it to a blockchain. That blockchain could be located, one of the nodes could be located within Alabama Power or it could be a cloud-based blockchain uh, 
collection. Based off this blockchain, you have the smart contracts, which I'll discuss in a minute, that distribute the uh, money to both Exxon and the fuel cell, that partnership, but then also provide the, up, the additional benefit of providing some automatic reporting uh, to the uh, government, which in this case is the EPA. The scenario I've created for this demonstration are a couple of uh, smart contracts. First, you have the scenario where the fuel cell vendor only gets paid while it's generating electricity. If the fuel cell has to be down for recharging or regeneration or maintenance, the fuel cell vendor doesn't get paid. Because the fuel cell vendor is able to monitor this continuously, they're able to provide better advice and planning uh, to minimize those times of recharging, regeneration, or maintenance. In this example contract, the tech vendor gets a fixed price only when the unit is generating. However, in power, we all know that power demand and load can go up and down very quickly, and the price that the generator gets can vary widely if we're on a day where there's high demand. So in this case, I have a bonus that the power company pays to incentivize the fuel cell manufacturer to keep their operation running during periods of high demand. So they get a bonus payment during that situation. In addition, uh, since this is a carbon capture device, the company, in this case Alabama Power, uh, gets a credit for all the carbon that's captured. In British Columbia, they have a very robust carbon tax system where all the power, all the <coughs> power generation companies and industrial, large industrial units have to pay a tax per carbon uh, they emit. In this case, if Alabama Power was in Canada, they could actually get a credit for the carbon that was recovered. So the second smart contract I have is basically issuing a credit, certified credit, based on the market price of carbon for every ton of uh, carbon that's removed. Uh, this could be used against their liability or they could sell these credits to other companies as well. Now I'm gonna switch over to uh, a system I have running, which is actually pulling in, uh, information uh, from the Envision IoT embedded platform. That information from our sensor is actually get, then getting pushed to the uh, cloud and blockchain, and then the contracts are operating. So I'm gonna run you through a quick demonstration of what that system could look like. So this is an example of our monitoring platform that we use internally to look at the performance of units, in this case, uh, in terms of properties, and then highlight issues as they come up. This information is part of the, could be part of either our internal monitoring platform or a customer dashboard, uh, say on your control system as well. That information, is then getting pushed to the blockchain, uh, I believe every five minutes. So the other day, somebody asked, somebody from Data Gumbo asked me, wow, our blockchain is filling up rapidly. <laughs> You're pushing a lot of information. So in this case, we're sending the information to the blockchain, those smart contracts are operating and the information is being recorded. So we'll go over here to the smart contracts page. 
and then take a quick look at the smart contract that's in operation here. You can see the contract is active. There are different participants. Participants In this case, Wood Energy is the uh, company that has the fuel cell embedded within it. You have the shareholders, which is actually the, the partner technology vendor, and you actually have the information, the environmental carbon capture credit being sent to the environmental reporting agency, which in this case is the EPA. All the participants had to actually go in and certify that they're in agreement with those contract terms. This is very important, especially in terms of regulatory, regulatory reporting, because you have to make sure you're complying with the requirements as they're uh, written in within the laws. You can check the validity period of the contract and then actually go in and look at the contract uh, within the editor as well. Here you can see where it's checking uh, as an example, you can see if you're generating power only when normal operation or if there is additional load uh, or additional market demand, which could give you an incentive-based payment for that performance. And then... And then you're collecting a, 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 the amount of actual co carbon that was, was recovered during that process as well for reporting to the EPA. That contract is currently operating and populating those blocks that we showed. go in here and look at the contract and then see all the different steps that are going into the contract in terms of where the script is executing and then where the invoice or report to the government is being created and then all that information is actually written to the blockchain. If we go over to the actual blockchain itself We can look here on one of these events. And you can see the raw data, which is actually the data packet. You can also look and see the example of the document that was created in terms of the report, in this case, the certified report of the carbon that's being captured. You can see during the time interval. Again, let me see if I can zoom in on this. With the information that could be uh, like I say, during the amount of carbon that was captured during this cycle, and then you get a price, a credit, based on the, again, the market price of carbon. Then down here at the bottom, I believe. You actually get a copy of the code that was uh, that the smart contract executed. So in this case, you could actually take this. It's not pretty, but it gives you the actual machine code that ran. So you can again verify that the contract was operating according to the requirements that you specified.
then finally, you actually have the invoice that was created or maybe automatically paid that shows that you were able to provide power during not just the period of normal demand, but in this instance, you actually had uh, peak demand. So you were actually able to create much more sophisticated contract terms, again, that aligns everybody, uh, that incentivizes everybody and rewards everybody for performance.